Hey, welcome back to our Buddhist series. We're diving into right livelihood. And no, that does not mean you have to quit your job, grab your monk clothes, join a monastery, and live a monastic life. But in this series on the fifth path, still looking at the ethics and the morality of the Dharma wheel, we'll be diving into, you know, where do we buy our products and go for services? And more importantly, how do we show up for work? Do we do it in a mindful way or do we hate our jobs? So more on that when we look at Buddhist teachings around the aspect of right livelihood. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. Looking to spread this message to as many people as we can. Are you ready, my bhikkhus? Let's get right to work and look at right livelihood in the Buddhist teachings. Thanks again for being part of this series. Are you ready? Let's dive in. beautiful path with you, the Sangha, right? The people who are studying and who are part of the Buddhist community, which bhikkhus you are. So hopefully at this point in your series, you're totally feeling connected, 100% dived in. And what I love to tell you today is guess what? We finished the Buddhist story. So it's a sad ending. Did I tell you he dies? Actually, the funny thing is I actually cried at the end. I've watched the movie 15 times, but I still cried. So when you hear the ending and how he ends the video and what he says, I, th I think it will move you too. So anyway, here's the movie, boom, right there. Go ahead and finish watching The Buddhist Part 2, 40 minutes to the end. And I hope you enjoy and hope you, hopefully you've enjoyed that story and his teachings through his story as much as I have and in this class. Okay, so we're diving in today to the right livelihood. So where are we? We finished the wisdom aspect, right? The first two paths um, were about wisdom and we were in the ethics and the morality aspect, which was speech, action, and today livelihood. And then the last three classes, we're gonna be all talking about mindfulness and meditation and concentration and effort. So that's what's to come. Ah, the middle way, right? Let's get grounded for a second and talk about really where we should be and what Buddha meant when he was talking about right livelihood. And this topic is probably, well, it's going to be the one that shakes you up the most, I hope. And so I hope at this point you're just a little bit more aware or a little bit more mindful of how your imprint and your impact in the world is what you're putting out, but also what's coming back. So what I love about livelihood is it really is karma being played out. So when I think of karma, I think of soul contracts and I think of those good bosses and I think of those bad bosses. And I think of the relationships that I've had at work and the friends that I've made and um, you know how many of those people that are in my professional life will hopefully be in lives to come in the way in which I treated them and the way in which they treated me. So a lot of karma plays out in our livelihood, which is why karma was so important many classes ago as a foundation. And so it's important to know how we think, it's important to know how we act, and it's important to know how we show up, right? A lot of that aspect of the path really plays out and is near and dear to this topic or this view, which is right livelihood. So don't assume, do not assume that the five precepts, which we know are, you know, the killing and the stealing and the drugs and alcohol and sexual misconduct and um, lies and deceit and all that, that, that as long as we're not doing jobs that are like that or have that aspect in them, that we're off the hook and we can move on in Buddha's journey. No, no, no. That is truly just an aspect of the Buddhist teaching when he talked about right livelihood. So what we're going to dive into this class for yourself is in asking a very important question, probably the most important question that any one person can ask you would be, right, are you happy? And what is happiness? So Buddha's whole teaching was about relieving and removing the dissatisfaction and the frustration and the suffering, the dukkha that we were experiencing in our lives so that we could truly be a joyful person. And hopefully you're figuring out and what that is for yourself and we're changing the world, right? That's, that's our goal for taking this class. 
So if we spend, you know, a big chunk of our day at work and we're not happy, then how can we really truly bring happiness to the world? So staggering terrible statistic is 85% of the people out there are miserable at their jobs. And I have certainly worked and coached people in my professional career and certainly in my coaching business have really focused on helping people through that suffering of their work and their job. And you know, it's always the same answer in my own spiritual practice when people come to me is that there'll be a correction. So I've always said to people, you know, if you're going to work and you hate it and you're miserable and um, you're angry when you're there and they're not getting the best light in you and all they're doing is paying you and you're not feeling joyful and satisfied and you're not showing up and using your skills or what you really feel, you're being underemployed or overutilized, whatever the word is that you can define your suffering at your job, if, it, if the percentage is really high on the negative side, well, I guess my joke is go ahead and stay. Don't worry, the universe is going to fix it for you. But what I'd like to say today is to empower you to look at that. But more importantly, make make movements or actions or goals or intentions or prayers or whatever you need to do to motivate yourself to get out of that situation and move towards being happy. So that is Buddhist teaching when he's talking about right livelihood he really wants us to act and be responsible and to be mindful and to be aware if we're not happy but make um, an effort to move towards that so we're going to be looking at that in this class today when i get into our questions and answers and we're going to do that in group together and there's aspects of that i'll probably break you out into groups to do so you can really dive in more for yourself but to be accountable okay let's get going into um, the Buddhist teachings when we look at right livelihood. And let's ask some questions and share some stories for you. Okay, so the first question I have for you is we all have these little you know, titles after our name. So let me give you some of my titles in my life. Um, I graduated from high school um, with the honor of class clown, no surprise there. I was um, started work at the Grand Union, which is like a Publix, for 20 years and was given the title of Grand Union Girl. And no one was surprised to find out that I was, you know, a cheerleader, right? So that's another title after my name with my enthusiasm. <clears throat> then I became a banker and a financial person supporting women in business. And I liked those titles. Those truly did support me. And now I guess the title after my name would be spiritual teacher and mentor life coach. So in all aspects of my life when i look over that they really truly are a, um, a reflection or i'm okay with them i like those titles i wouldn't want titles of you know a micromanager <clears throat> a bossy boss um, somebody who was out to get think about only myself if i had done any of these jobs with those titles behind them um, I would not be in the right livelihood. So let's ask the questions for yourself when you think about how you show up for your job. Okay, are you ready? So think of that title that you currently have. Is it a title that truly does connect to your passion and how you want to be seen? Like I was just giving you an example. You know, so the question is yes or no. And so if no, explain why. But more importantly, if yes, explain why. Okay, let's move on. <clears throat> Excuse me. Number two question that we'll be answering in class. If you were doing your dream job, what would it be? Give as much detail as you can. Describe it down to the detail. Be specific. So when I'm working with people in my coaching practice and I say, give me ideal, I say there, there's no barrier for how much money you can make. There's no barrier to how hard you have to work you know, just play this out in this kind of like a dreamlike state. And it's amazing that the people who are doing the jobs they're doing, and then when they create their ideal job, they're pretty far apart from each other, okay? So as we know in past classes with me, if it's so far apart, it can't happen, right? So, but we need to make the steps to get there. So 
Create your ideal job. What would it be? Even down to the aesthetics of it. You know, I joke, I could never work in an office and sit at a cube. I could never work in a place without windows. It would, I would, even if it was the best job I ever had in the world and they walked me to the desk and they said, this is your hold in the, in the basement and I was getting paid a million dollars, I could not work that way. So that's something that matters to me. So when you're describing your ideal job down to the detail, think about all those things that really matter to you. Okay, let's move on. If, um, whoo, can't do it from memory. Oh, this one I love. Share the worst job you ever had and explain to the group why. So you don't have to give a lot of detail to that, but what I'm looking for you for, to do for yourself, you know, you gotta know what you don't want in order to know what you do want. Share with the group what your, um, what your dukkha would be if you were in the worst job. And have you had that worst job? What, what, what aspects about it were bad, okay? <clears throat> Little side joke for me. I've had the same job for, you know, 25 years and I could, if I walked into the same desk every day and did the same job, what really mattered for me was who my boss was. Maybe it's the Aries in me and the leader that I am. If I'm led in a wrong way at a job, I could go from loving my job to hating my job in 24 hours based on my boss. Now maybe that's giving him too much, her or him too much power because I've had both, but it really mattered to me. So that's an aspect of good jobs and bad jobs. So, you know, find those aspects out for yourself. Okay. And so here's the next question that you're going to have to answer. What five steps can you make towards your dream job? So even for those of you who are in this class who love your job, I bet you could probably make it even better for yourself. Maybe you're not getting paid. Maybe you want to work less. Maybe you want more free time to, you know, watch the movies that Jean suggest on YouTube and meditate more, okay? Write that in on your plan, I hope you do. So write up five steps that you think you could be taking or making <clears throat> to get to that ideal job, okay? And then your homework for the last 30 days is gonna be absolutely to do one of them. And I'm gonna make you accountable for that for the group. You're gonna have to say, I'm doing this, and then check off when it's actually happened next time we meet into circle, okay? Okay, I would love to end Right Livelihood by giving you a little uh, spoil alert on how the movie and how Buddha's journey ends as you'll watch when you watch this video. And at the end of the story, he is, you know, they're all grieving him and they're crying and he turns to them and he said, I am not your light. You are your own light. Be the light within. And that is truly the true definition of what we're talking about when we're looking at right livelihood. And you know what I, I think the privilege of being able to be in the world that we're in today, where we get to create our own titles and our own jobs and our own definition of how we want to show up and how we get paid. Back in Buddha's time, you know, before Buddhism, there was Hinduism and you were born into what you were going to do. There were only four castes. You were either the priest, the Brahmin priest, you were either a warrior, you were either a trader, which is somebody like commerce, you know, trade me a pot, I'll give you the, I'll give you the cow, you know, I'll weave you this bucket, um, or you were the servants to those people. And Buddha had a hard time with that. He said, no, in fact, if you were not one of those castes that you were just born into, and Buddha was actually born into the caste of a warrior, um, he said, it's ridiculous. I shouldn't just be born into the caste that I am. Um, it's how I behave and what I do and my actions and my thought and my effort and my concentration and all the things we've been learning on the path that truly do create the livelihood that we have in our life and that's what defines us and i just love that because back in that society in that world if you were not one of those four you were considered an outcast so i think that's really important to know so as you wrap up and hopefully i've shaken the apple tree for you today and i've really made you mindful or thinking about the question do you get up every day and and just totally live 
to go to work. And that is the goal, okay? That you love what you do. And there are so many people in our group that I feel, and I hope you see me as one of those people, that is truly living from that place of doing what you love. And if you'd like more of that, reach out to the people who you think get it and that are doing it. And if you're someone in class that is that person, then raise your hand, get online, Facebook post that truth so that the people who are feeling that they're not in that space and they're really um, working to live um, can reach out to you and let's, as a group, find a way that we can all get there and then just be happy into the world, right? So I'm gonna end it with that. I'm gonna let you think about that and I'm gonna certainly ask you to work in the next month as you are in the path of livelihood um, to be committed to finding happiness in the place in which you are being apprenticed and certainly show up in the most positive way, generous and loving and kind way that you can at your place of employment. Okay. And if you're self-employed, especially, right? This is Jeannie Lynch signing off. We will get back together next month as we look at right effort and we're into the meditation and the concentration aspect of the Buddhist paths. Three more paths to go. I am so grateful for the journey that we're taking together. Have a fabulous day. Love and light. <sighs> Goodbye, Bikkus. Namaste. So speaking of livelihood, I had to share this with you. I just, I videotaped this morning and just got off the trail and did a beautiful ride with my friend Richard. And, you know, I'm walking the path and just this, you know, beautiful metaphor of, of my life and just how every day I get to do what I get to do. And I think of Buddhist teaching and what we just learned in this class. And this is it. This is my nirvana having a really good workout and walking this path with you, um, you know, in the metaphor of a literal path, but also the path that we're, we're creating together and really just uncovering all that our life is, right? And taking a moment to just be so thankful that um, this is what we're experiencing. And I can honestly tell you, if, I, if you would ask me 15 years ago, what my version of the best happiness would be. Um, I would tell you that even in my biggest dream, I could not have ended up where I am, which is in the place I am, with the friends I have, and the relationship I am in, doing the work that I get to do. So I wanted to share my path with you, more importantly, the bike path, and just reflect on today's message, which is the right livelihood. And I wish and hope this all for you. And if you're living the path, again, um, share, share that. Share that truth and share that beauty out into the world because we truly are blessed. Signing off. Namaste. I'll catch you on the trail. Jeannie. Bye now. <laughs>